there are, you know, have been mathematicians who are also artists, artists who are mathematicians, and, you know, for one reason or another, we know um, Da Vinci for his Mona Lisa, but he also had, you know, phenomenal scientific work that he was doing. Um, and same with Galileo, um, Abegur. So the classic example is if you take like the XYZ, um, if you just read that, if you're literary, it's the last three letters of the alphabet, but if you have um, a background in math, you know, immediately what pop, or what can pop into your mind, what visual experience is, you know, the XYZ axes, and you have immediately dimension and perspective and shape, you can plot out things in there. Um, people who read these equations, you know, Will, this will come to their mind visually. So it's this wonderful human capacity to visualize. It's basically drawing out what's going on in the math. Um, it's no different than elementary geometry in high school. You know, of, um, there you know could be an equation for a circle. You know, if, if I wrote down the equation of you know c equals you know d times pi, um, what pops into you know someone's head is a circle. It's the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. So just reading that notation, you know, in a room full of, you know, artists, nothing comes to their mind. <laughs> but if, you know, one of those people has a background in math, the, the shape that's rendered in their mind is a circle. Each one is um, an experiment where I'm working out different ideas and then, you know, there is a certain composition that I um, am working toward as well. Um, and once that is complete and the ideas are finished, my work on the, the, the ideas, then, um, then I have, you know, more canvases I want to work on and new ideas I want to try. So that, that's how I see when the paintings are finished.